Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fort Laramie High School, where tonight, in a battle of the Redskins, the Fort Laramie Redskins welcome in the St. Henry Redskins. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Mark Shine and our entire WSN crew. Mark, we take a look at this matchup tonight, and it's not too far-fetched to say that both of these squads are playing their best football of the season. Right now, St. Henry has won two of their last, or three of their last five, and Fort Laramie has won five of their last seven. Absolutely. I think uh, St. Henry, let, let's take a look at them first, because it's, it's been a disappointing regular season for them in some respects. But I, I liken a little bit to the basketball tournament where, you know, you didn't have the best regular season, but you get into the playoffs and you make something happen. Yes. It's kind of a yep. brand yep. new season, and they've been able to do that with a win last week. Fort Army, they're playing very well right now. They've made a little change in quarterback that makes a difference for them too, and we'll see how they play this evening as well. And speaking of quarterbacks, Mark, St. Henry brings in two quality quarterbacks yeah. that they use. I, I think one of them is injured this evening. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see which one actually gets on the field. We've been hearing rumblings through the crowd and press box and so yes. on. One of them had a concussion a week ago, so we'll see who actually performs those duties this evening, and we're going to get a chance because they'll get the football first. So Fort Laramie will kick off to St. Henry. It's the second yeah. week of the state football playoffs. And there's the ball blew off the tee. The, the wind's around 12 to 15. It, it is behind Fort Laramie in this opening quarter. It's about 55 degrees right now. It's going to get colder, and we'll see how that wind affects play this evening. Mark, this is a rematch of last year's playoff game where St. Henry won that one 43 to 20. And here comes St. Henry as they'll field it at the five-yard line. They'll bring it up the right side, and they'll be pushed out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Fort Laramie won the, to the coin toss earlier, and they deferred, and hence they will kick off now and get the ball to start the second half. And, Mark, I said that St. Henry won that game last year. Fort Laramie actually won that game 43-20. to I don't even know what I'm writing down here sometimes, but uh, <laughs> walk me through this, buddy. So here come the Redskins coming out on offense. And it looks like they will be led on the field by number 12, Charlie Whirling, the 6'1", 195-pound sophomore. He's 50 of 129 for 672 yards and three touchdowns. The problem with him right now is a lot of interceptions. He's got seven on the year, so we'll see if he can't get that under control. He's going to take it off the left side for a gain of about two yards. The other quarterback has been Jack Hillsman, number four. So we'll see if he's able to get on the field at all this evening after that three-yard gain. St. Henry comes in offensively averaging 12.1 a game, defensively giving up 25 points a game. So uh, coming at 3-7, and 2-6 and six in the MAC mark. But, hey, you know what? They're in the it, second round. It, it's MAC football. You right, know, you're right. going to play somebody good every week, and they've been able to, to survive through the season and at that 4-7 and seven record with a win last week. Here's whirling in the gun. He's got three receivers off to his right, a second and seven from the 28. They'll hand the ball off the left side, and they'll get a gain of about two yards. That big defensive front there, 4-4 four, four, Lormie. Big number 83, Damian Bruns, the 6'6", 235-pound defensive end, makes the tackle. Just a yard pickup, a little inside handoff. And Fell already facing a third and a lengthy six. So third and six from the 24. Danny Holbrook, Mark Schein from Fort Loramie High School for round two of the state playoffs. Whirling's in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. He's got one in the slot. He's got a single setback off to his left. Whirling takes the snap. He looks across the middle. And there's going to be a stoppage of play. A flag comes down. Going to have a false start on that St. Henry offensive line. A little bit of nerves early on. That makes that uh, now a, you know, a lengthy attempt here on third down. And you're right, they have had interception problems with both quarterbacks this year. And now they've got to put the football up, perhaps into the wind, with a pretty good defensive secondary from Fort Laramie. Mark, both of these teams relatively close to each other, just mm. down the road. Does yep. that play into this in the second round of the well, state playoffs, yeah. knowing each team? <laughs> you know each other. You're, the parents know each exactly. other. Exactly. You're yes, related. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So here comes Whirling in the gun. He's going to take the snap. He's going to roll to his right, looks down the field. He's under heavy pressure, throws to the right, and he's got a man out there. And a nice play by the defensive back from Fort Loramie. As soon as I can get a number on that young man, we're quite a ways from the field, yes. Mark, but a nice play by that young man. Well, of course, the other part of that is those black numbers on red jerseys from a long distance away are, are difficult to read. But a nice play, nice break on the football. And again, that was into the wind, so perhaps held up a little bit. And you can see this punt now is going to be into the wind, probably going to give Fort Loramie a good field position. So that'll bring on Owen Zimmerman, the sophomore. He'll punt the ball away. Back at about the 45-yard line for Fort Loramie. Average is about 33 yards a punt on the season. Punting into the wind. A bad snap. Oh, the ball is low, and he gets it off, but not much of a punt there. Maybe 10, 15 yards. It's going to roll, but uh, Fort Loramie's in business, Mark. Yes, they are. The 
did and that, not. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Sanders, Sanders says we got the ball, that it was touched. And the officials say it's exactly yes, what happened. So what a break for St. Henry. The punt, the snap was muffed. Yep. He grabs the ball, gets the punt off. Not a very good punt, but apparently it hit off of a Fort Lormie player. And they're going to look at the the 34. It actually becomes a, a – they didn't get to the 35-yard line, which they needed to do to get a first down. So that it would, would not be a change of possession then, correct? Well, we'll have to wait and see. See what the officials say here. A caucus here with our head official, Greg, Greg Newark. Greg Newark. They were all set to move the sticks, and now we're kind of a hesitation for a moment. They're going to go explain this to the St. Henry coaching staff. So we'll sort it out here. This is going to be a huge first big break for this Redskins, St. Henry Redskins. i got to remember, they're both Redskins, so uh, we have to call them by their first names. But they are discussing this. And I should long. mention, too, Danny, this field is in excellent shape. This has not had a football game played on it since September. Uh, the last several football games, plus the playoff game last week for Fort Lauderdale was on the road, and this field is in wonderful condition. It was resodded back in the early part of the year, and it's in great shape tonight. So they'll still discuss this. Fort Lormie comes in the game at 6-5, and five, Mark, averaging 27.6 a game. Defensively good up 26, 25.7. Uh, inconsistency for both of these teams. Yeah, that's why, you know, when you when you got the same number of points offensively as right. you defensively, yeah. that's why you're looking at a 6-5 and five record. Um, you know, they've had some good wins this year. And then LCC, who is really playing well right now, gave them some problems in the last game of the season. They got a win last week. And let's see what this is going to be. So they're talking to both coaches. And they're going to say Fort Lormie's going to retain possession. Yep. And I'm hoping somebody can explain that to us. But, yeah, they're going to say Fort Lormie. And I'm assuming because they did not get back to the original first down marker. I think that's what they – and the St. Henry staff is still on the field discussing this. And, look, we have an official now headed to the end zone. Guess what that means? It's rule book time. <laughs> and that is exactly they do. They what they keep he's doing. a rule book at the goalpost at one end or the other, and that's exactly where we're at. And Danny, we're going to take some time to sort this one out. Yeah. Well, they're going to take some time to sort this one out. We're going to step aside. We'll take a break. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School, where the officials have talked about it, and apparently they are giving the ball back to Fort Laramie. We are not understanding of the rule. The officials came out. They went down to the goalpost. They got a rule book out. I'm not making this up, folks. They got a rule book out. They stood at midfield, and they discussed it, and they're giving the ball back to Mark. What say you? Uh, well, we're giving the ball back to Fort Laramie. Uh, you know, that was a, like a 10-minute conversation, yeah, right. and they're still trying to explain it to St. Henry Coach Luthman what, what exactly this call is made and why. And quite honestly, it's a very important part of the football game, sure. even though it's 10-14. You give the Redskins from Fort Laramie the ball right here. They got a short field. If you give it back to St. Henry, they got a chance to dodge a big bullet. And it's, a, it's an important part of the football game. You want to get it right. Yeah. So what we can tell you, and we can say about instant replay, and speaking of instant replay, tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio, by also Structure Outdoor Ohio, bring your indoors out. So you'll see on the replay where the punt was partially blocked, correct, Mark? Yes. And then it went down and hit a Fort Laramie risk. Yeah. All right, we're let's back play. at it. Yeah, let's play. Let's play football. It'll be first and ten from the thirty-four. They'll hand off the ball on the right side. Get through a nice, nice big gain of about eight yards. For Lormy, will it be led on the field by quarterback Max Maurer, the six-two, one hundred eighty-pound junior? Is eighty-nine of one fifty-two for eleven hundred and forty-two yards, fourteen touchdowns, and five interceptions. He's also got three hundred sixty-seven yards rushing. Mark. He does. He's got a really good running back who just carried the football right there, Will Holland. About 1,000 yards for him on the season, too. And here goes Holland. Or they'll go on the left side. Yeah. Take it up towards the first down marker, and they're going to be maybe right at the first down marker. We'll have to see about that. Ball carrier is number 11, Will Holland. And they got a first down. Mark, Will Holland has 13 touchdowns on the ground and only one fumble. That young man takes care of the ball, and he gets some tough yards when they need it. Really good high school football player. 
So here comes Maurer in the gun. He's got Holland off to his right side. He's got two receivers to the right. Maurer's going to go to the right, looking downfield. He's under pressure. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be taken down. He's been taken down by number 53 for the Redskins, Tate Layfeld, the six foot. 253-pound senior, knocks him down to the ground. That'll bring up a third down for the Fort Lormie Redskins. They've used a couple different quarterbacks out of the Fort Lormie Redskins lately. Gabe Hart has played there some recently. Maxwell Maurer has played there as well. Start goes to the junior Maurer. Maurer's back in the gun. He's got trip receivers off to his left and two on to the right in an empty formation. And it looks like St. Henry's going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout on the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. So it'll be second down and seven from the 21. Fort Lormie trying to get on the board first. Mauer's in the gun. He's got two backs, one to the right, one to the left. They'll go off the right side. And a gain of about, about a yard, yard and a half for number 11, Will Holland. He's going to get the bulk of the carries for the Fort Lormie Redskins. We talked about him already. He's a thousand yard back, and he has a nose for the end zone. Well, and Danny, you talk about not being able to read numbers from up here. Gabe Hart's a quarterback at number four. At least he was on that play. Both of them are 6'2. Hart goes 205. Maurer goes 180. So they're both big, strong kids. But right now, it is Gabe Hart. Yeah, you're right, Mark. Those numbers are really hard to read. Yeah, I apologize and, and for that. Max Maurer is in the ball game. He is off the left of Hart. So Gabe Hart, the 6'2 junior, he's under pressure. He's going to take it up the middle. Oh. There he goes towards the end zone. He gets to the five. He jumps over a defender, <laughs> and he's taken down at about the three-yard line. He saw that open up when the offensive line pushed the defensive line to the perimeters. Gave him room to go up the middle. Good first down run for him. So Gabe Hart, we talked about the two quarterback system they're using here at Fort Loramie, and Gabe Hart shows the, the athleticism there as he takes it towards the goal line. And I was incorrect. It's about the seven-yard line, eight-yard line, right in that area. It'll be first and goal from the eight-yard line. Fort Loramie trying to get on the board here first. Hart's in the gun. He's got one to the left, two to the right. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to throw to the middle. And that, and that stoppage of play, another flag. Boy, they had that set up, too. The receiver cut right in the middle of that line and made a heck of a catch to go into the end zone. But they're going to say an offsides call. That's what the call was. Puts it down to the four. That'll move it up to the four-yard line, first and goal from the four-yard line. Must have lined up offsides. It's a dead ball a foul. Hart's going to take the snap. He's going to hand off to the first back through the middle, off to the left side, and it gets closer towards the goal line, but no signal yet. Now they're saying he is down before he got in. Holland got to about the three. Well, really, not really got just but didn't pick up anything. Just say about a four. gain of yeah. nothing there for the four-yard line. Here comes the seventh play of this drive. Clock continues to run at 6.57 in the first quarter. Still zeros on the scoreboard. So Hart's got Holland off to his left side. He's going to give the ball to Holland and hit immediately. And a terrific job by the St. Henry defensive line, Mark as they get in there and make a nice stop. I think that was Adam Frank got there first. He was there along with the number seven, Gavin Lange. That's going to be a loss back to the six. So Ty Kemper, the 6'3", 205-pound tight end, comes into the game now. I'm assuming they're going to keep it on the ground here, bringing in uh, some bigger athletes. We'll see what they do here. Hart's going to be in an empty backfield. He's got trips off to his right, two receivers to the left. Got a man in motion. He's going to roll to the right, looks through the end zone, throws to the side. He's got a man out there, and he is short at about the one-yard line mark, and a great job of keeping him out of the end zone by the St. Henry defense. Catch the number. That was Holland catching the ball out of the backfield. But you're right. He's going to be short, and 
right down to the one-yard line, so it's fourth down. It's a big play. Fourth and goal from the one-yard line. Six minutes to go here in this game. Fort Lorem, he's going to go for it on fourth down. Hart's going to take the ball. He's going to give it to Holland right up the middle, and he is stopped short, I believe. No signal for a touchdown. Nope, he and didn't get he there. he did not get in. So the St. Henry defense comes up with a huge stop on fourth and goal. They got great penetration. Holland had nowhere to go. Really good play by the defensive line of the Redskins and to hold right there. And obviously keeps uh, center, the St. Fort Army Redskins off the scoreboard with halfway through quarter number one. But now they're in a very precarious position themselves. So it didn't go their way on the decision of the punt, but they did their job, they kept them out yeah. of the end zone. No points on the board for Fort Lormy, And St. Henry has 99 yards to go. Four plays from inside the eight-yard line. In fact, because of the penalty, four plays from inside the four couldn't score. Hulesman goes under center. He's going to hand the ball off. And... He is going, ooh, did he get out of the end zone? The Fort Lormy kids are saying it's a safety. The officials are going to say he got past the goal line. Hillsman was quarterback on that play. So they are alternating their quarterback. They've got number 12 in the game as well, Whirling. And Hillsman just trotted off to the sideline. So they're going to do that double quarterback thing, Dan. It's going to confuse us all night. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> No problem there. <laughs> That'll bring up second and 10 from the one-yard line. St. Henry very, desperately trying to get out of this situation. Very fortunate they didn't get a safety. Whirling's in the gun. He's got one receiver to the far right. He's going to get to the first back up, and he gets about four or five yards. Let's see who that was. That was number 22 for the St. Henry Redskins. Ryan Worley, the 5'11 senior. Makes his way through that line. And he makes it a manageable third and five, Mark. He does. He, they got uh, about five on that play going off the right side of their formation. And this is a big first down. Otherwise, you're punting into the wind from your own end zone. Here comes Whirling. He's in the gun. He's going to take the snap. Looks across, and he throws off to the right and just out of the reach of his intended target. That was number one for the St. Henry Redskins, Jared Nitfield. The 5'11 junior misses that one, and St. Henry's going to have to punt the ball away. Well, we know about the issues they had on their previous punt with the snap and how all that turned out. But even a good punt right here from your own six-yard line means it's going to be great field position for Fort Army. Just field the football. Don't let it bounce and roll. And the Redskins from Fort Army have a good uh, position to start second possession yeah, game. Yeah, they've got their two backs at the 35-yard yeah. line mark. So anything, and they're punting into the win, and they had trouble with the first snap punt is up and it is low and it is about about let's see 25 yards in length 24 yards and the Fort Lormy Redskins were going to take over at about the 25 yard line so we've played on this end of the field the entire first quarter well mark. you could see all their players just said get away from it get away from it they didn't want a, a touch to occur and have a, a similar situation from a moment ago but but you're right Danny here they are uh, this possession is going to start on about with the 34 which is where the last one started. Actually, it's not the... It's a 25, 20, 24, 25, 20, yeah, 24 yard line. My bad. You're only off 10 yards. Well. That's all right. <laughs> Throwing across the middle. Misses his intended target. And they're going to yep. say that, that, you know what they're going to call, Mark? They're going to call defensive holding or uh, pass interference, but i got to believe it's got to be holding. Uh, Hillsman just impeded his progress as he was trying to run a post pattern to the middle of the field. We'll wait to see the call here. First and 10 from the 24-yard line. They're going to say pass interference. Yeah. Whoa, offensive. it's called on the offensive They're going to call wow. offensive pass interference. So we've seen a lot of different calls tonight. That's not exactly what I thought. The receiver well, from Fort Lormy, it looked like he cut to the middle. It looked like the St. Henry defender was holding on to him. I, I looked at it late. So perhaps some of that occurred prior to uh, well, yeah. what I saw. And uh, what I saw was the, the St. Henry player kind of impeding his progress. But maybe it was kind of pushed out of the way at that particular point. So we're all the way back to the 39-yard line. 25 or 15 yard penalty makes the first to 25. So Gabe Hart in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his right, one to the left. He's got Holland in the backfield with him. He takes the snap. He's going to throw off to the right side. It almost picked Whoa, up. It, oh, it, was, what a it, catch. it was a catch. The ball was almost picked off, and Max Maurer comes out of nowhere and gets the deflection. That looked like INT and maybe even a pick six when he first let it go. And instead, it went through the defender's hands. 
and down to the 36-yard line. So picked up three on what could have been a disastrous type play. So Max Maurer, the uh, sometime yeah. quarterback, is uh, doing he, all of it He's tonight. obviously a very good <laughs> wide receiver, which is partly why they made this change. So here comes Hart in the gun. He takes the snap, looks across the middle, throws to the left side, and he's got a man out there immediately taken down for a gain of about five yards. Nice tackle by Dominic Schwartz. The receiver turned around, and he was immediately hit at the ankles. The receiver was number three. That's Maurer again. So Maurer, two catches in a row on this drive, brings up third and 18 from the 32. Yeah, those two catches only netted them seven yards. Right. Yeah, they were going backwards. Probably four down territory, but. Hart takes the snap. He looks across the middle. He's going to try to go up the middle, and he's taken down. So not much working offensively here for the Fort Laramie Redskins. Maybe not quite a sack, but it had the same uh, uh, a result in it. Got back to about the 32-yard line, the line of scrimmage on that play. Mark, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. with how well they played defensively. <laughs> yeah, that's yes, exactly what I yes. – you're reading my mind. St. Henry's coming in here fired up, and they're not taking a backseat to anybody defensively. So they are going to punt and try to, to pin them back deep. So Fort Lorimer will come on. Fourth and 18. 2.46 to go. They'll punt the ball away. Try to pin St. Henry deep into their own territory. Keep this field position the way that uh, favors Fort Army. Big crowd on hand tonight. And there goes the play clock. Yeah, they're going to give themselves a little bit more time. That was, that was not done before the play clock expired. So just back them up about five and give them a little more space to kick the football. Which, yeah, you're right, Mark. In this situation, not a big deal because you're going to go back to the 50. Uh, you, you're trying to pin them uh, on the corner here, so we'll see what they do. To the, what, uh, 37? Yep, back to about five. So the kicker stands at about the 46-yard line, 47-yard line. off is the punter. And he drops it at about the goal line, and it rolls into the end zone. So St. Henry will start at the 20-yard line, 2.14 to go. Try to flip a little field position here for the St. Henry Redskins. Certainly better field position than the last time when it started on their one-yard line, but they've been three and out, three and out, have the St. Henry Redskins. So the St. Henry Redskins, Mark, they started out the year with an absolute huge win. Yes. And I say that because St. Mary's right now is playing really good football, and this team shut them out 17 to nothing. That they did. Had a tough game on the road the week after that, and things kind of spiraled a little bit out of control for them. But they had a couple wins here lately that got them into the playoffs. Of course, Sandry playing well got them enough points to get them into the playoffs as well. And then a good win last week. So here come the Redskins. Charlie Whirling will take over the quarterback duties here. He's in the gun. Got two to the left, one to the right. And the first man up the middle. And a nice run for about six yards by the first back through the middle. They've been using Ryan Worley a lot here in, these opening, in the opening quarter. So Worling carries the ball. That'll bring up second and should be about four yards here, five yards, give or take a yard. They never started the play clock. Now that, I was going to, yeah. Are they having issues with the play clock? They just Could got be. it going, so they've got plenty of time to get this play off. They'll hand the ball to Whirling again off the left side. He's going to try to get to the sidelines, and a nice run by Whirling as he's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. So a big pickup there by number 22, Ryan Whirling, and he's showing you that speed that young man has. Just man-on-man -man blocking up front, and he was able to get the edge and take the ball all the way to the 44-yard line. That's uh, 23 and 16. Danny, what is that, uh, 39? 39. <laughs> so finally, St. Henry gets the ball on the other side of the field. They got to feel good about that, being back on their own goal line, the possession and before. They jump. And they got you're right. Yep. They're going to get an offsides call against the Fort Laramie Redskins. So a little cadence call there by Charlie Whirling, maybe. He throws them off sides, and they'll pick up five yards the easy way. I, I have no idea, of course, how this is going to play out, Danny, but this is kind of how their season has gone. You know, right. they struggle, 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 and then they found a crease and got things going here a little bit. Well, they found something in number 22, Ryan Worley, as he's carried the ball a few times, and a big pickup there for a 39-yard uh, gain. So Worling is in the gun. 
He's got Worley. He's going to hand the ball up to Worley up the right side and really keeps those feet moving, Mark, and he's a nice looking back as he goes through the hole. Well, they pulled at number 71, Anderson Kramer, that possession and got him out to get a good block and they're going to make it a second and short now after the penalty and then that run. So whirling to whirly on the handoff, say that seven times fast. <laughs> Clock continues to run towards the end of the first quarter. A nice drive here by the St. Henry Redskins. It'll bring up second and two from the 36. Danny Herbert, Mark Schein from Fort Laramie High School. Round two of the state football playoffs here in the Buckeye State. And the St. Henry Redskins are trying to move on. This is Whirling. He's going to keep it himself as he goes off the right side. And he's going to pick up another first down for the St. Henry Redskins. Whirling goes 6'1", 195. He's been their leading rusher. Uh, through the season, and you can see why from his quarterback position as he that time picks up enough yardage to get a first down. It's almost a thousand yard back yes. from the quarterback position. Pretty good numbers there over 900 yards. So Whirling looks across the field to his head coach to get they his. They do not have to run a play, and they let yeah. this run down. They can get the wind at their back for the rest of this drive. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to let that clock roll down. So that'll do it for the first quarter from Fort Lormy High School. We got zeros on the scoreboard. We'll be back with second quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back here to Fort Lormy High School. Danny Hook, Mark Shine. Fort Laramie Redskins and the St. Henry Redskins doing battle here in round two of the state playoffs. St. Henry got a first and 10 from the 33. They've got Charlie Whirling in the quarterback position as he's trying to move his troops down the field to strike first. He's got one single back to his left and he's going to hand off. That's number 22, Worley, and he is taken down before he gets to the line of scrimmage, and a great job by the Fort Laramie defensive line. Well, they tried to pull Alex Post that time, but the defensive back of defensive lineman came behind him and was able to make a tackle on a play that developed a little bit slowly and lost a couple back to the 35. Yeah, Ryan Worley tried to use his speed to get to the left side, and there wasn't ha nothing happening on that play. And a great job there by the Fort Laramie defensive line. That'll bring up second and 12 from the 35-yard line. Whirling's in the gun. He's got Whirly off to his left. He's got two receivers to the left and a single receiver far right. Whirling takes the snap. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to the left. He's going to keep it himself as he cuts back to the middle of the field, and he's going to pick up about four yards. Nobody open downfield, and he took a look at it. I thought he was trying to get a screen set up to his right. That wasn't what was the intended play, apparently, because that was all blown up, and he did get down to the 31, so picked up four. A nice drive here, Mark. They're it not is. picking up big chunks. Yeah. They got they had the big run by Worley earlier in the possession, but they're keeping steady. They're getting positive yardage, and they're keeping the ball. And this will be the seventh play of the drive. So here comes Whirling. He's got Worley off to his right. He's got a single receiver far right. Got a man in motion. They'll hand the ball off to the motion man, and he is just surrounded by a host of Fort Laramie Redskins. And they hand the ball off to number 22 there again, Ryan Worley, and nothing happening. Well, they lined him up as a wing back, tried to run him on a sweep type action, and boy, the Redskins wearing red and black were just sitting on top of that one. <laughs> All the way back to the 35-yard line, which is just past the original line of scrimmage. So it's fourth down now to decision time for St. Henry. Bring up fourth and 12 from the 35. Mark, I think they're going to go for it as they're bringing out Charlie Whirling in quarterback formation here. He's got a single back to his left. Whirling looks across the middle. He's going to throw down the left side. And he's got his man out there, and the reception is made, and it's a good catch. What a nice pitch and catch by Charlie Whirling as he just gets it over the outstretched arms of the defensive back. He got the ball to Jared Neatfield, and he was able to keep his feet in bounds as well after the good catch. That was a nice fourth down play, makes it a first down now, and kept the drive going just inside the 15-yard line. And, you know, Charlie Whirling did a great job of keeping that play alive, and what a nice touch pass that it young was, man made. Yes. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 15. Whirling's in the gun. He's got Ryan Whirly off to his left as he waits the snap. They're going to go Whirly up the middle as he does a little dancing. The ball is fumbled. The ball is loose. And it looks like St. Henry recovered, Mark. 
But that could have been disaster for the St. Henry Redskins on a almost is it a ten play drive now? I'm assuming uh, that was play number nine right yes. there. So you are correct. Got down to the eleven, so picked up four. That'll make it second and six from the eleven yard line. Nine twenty six to go. And what a what a bounce back by the St. Henry Redskins after a, a, a not a really great first quarter, Mark. I would agree with that. They've got this trips formation too. So they've got him bunched up on the right side. Whirling's in the gun. Whirling's off to his right. Whirling's going to keep it himself. Tried to follow the block of Whirling, and not much happening there, and not much gain at all. He, he put his hand on Whirling's back, Mark, and he, he tried to go through the middle, but yeah. the, the defensive line did a great yeah, job. Too much defensive penetration from uh, Fort Army, and just unable, no, no room to pick up any yardage in there. The ball went back to the, uh, what, about 11 to the 12-yard line yeah, they're or gonna so? Mark so they lost They're going to say the 11-yard line. That'll bring up third and six. So a big third down here for the St. Henry Redskins. Still knotted up at zeros on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Whirling takes the snap. Blitz coming. Throws to the left or the right corner and just over the hands of his intended receivers. He tried to go to the corner of the end zone on the left side. That was the same play they ran to pick up the first down. Looks like they want to go field goal opportunity now here. That would be Aiden Bolin. So Aiden Bolin, who has the wind behind his back here. So we'll see how this goes. 34 of 36 on the season with his point after touchdowns. He's missed his only field goal opportunity of the year. And the ball is going to be set down at about the, what, 18-yard line? 18 yards, so about yep. a 28-yard attempt here for the St. Henry Redskins. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up. Whoa. And it is good. Mark, he could have hit that one from 38. Yeah, that that so. might end up in Mister. <laughs> <laughs> so the St. Henry Redskins score first. They make it 3 to nothing with 8.24 to go. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School with 8.24 to go. The St. Henry Redskins get on the board first and make it 3 to nothing, Mark. And uh, you've got the scoring drive for yeah, us. 12 plays, 67 yards, 450 went off the clock. And they're on the bar board first with that 28-yard field goal from Aiden Bolin. Mark, you know, it's three points, and it doesn't seem like a lot. But right now, from what we've seen, both offenses are doing a little bit of sputtering right now. So those are really big points in this point in the game. And you know what? For St. Henry, who comes in here as the underdog, just, just we're in it. You know, right. we're, we're competing. That ball's going to get to the end zone. A nice kick there by the St. Henry kicker as he knocks it through the end zone. Bolin's got a nice leg, doesn't he? Yes, 5 he 11, does. 190 190-pound senior. We've seen some really good kickers this year. Last week yeah. I had Kyle Beach from oh, Wapakoneta, and he is outstanding. Yes, he is. And uh, this young man is uh, doing a great job tonight for his St. Henry Redskins. First field goal of the season. It comes from 28 yards. So here come the Fort Laramie Redskins as they try to get themselves back in this one. Down 3-0. Gabe Hart will take the quarterbacking duties. He's got Will Holland off to his left. He's got three receivers to the left, one wide out right. Hart's going to hand the ball off to Holland up the middle, and he gets about four yards. A nice run there by Holland Will Holland. Wrestled down as he got across the 25-yard line to the 26. You know, Mark, they've got Will Holland listed at 5'10". He doesn't look that tall. and he's The problem right now is he can hide behind those <laughs> big offensive linemen. He's, he's got, nice he's got moves. He, he does. He's quick. He's got a good first step, and he yeah. weighs 180 pounds, so he's tough to bring down, he too. He absolutely is. He's a nice-looking back. So now they'll go empty backfield. The Fort Laramie Redskins will. They've got trips to the right, one to the left. Hart's going to keep it himself as he goes off the left side, comes close to a first down. That's going to be, uh, they're going to mark it, let's see, about a yard short maybe. That'll bring it third and, nope, they move, no, they're the moving ball the right chains. The Absolutely. Line, yeah, so they're going to give it to him. So they're going to say that was a first down. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Structure is our instant replay sponsor. So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 30. And they'll go Holland again up the middle for a gain of about two yards. They're going to stay with that steady die out of Will Holland and uh, keep the ball on the ground, Mark. Jacob Lefeld was the first of the defensive linemen to make contact. Second down. 
for Laramie on the season mark, they give up 160 rushing yards per game, so they are susceptible to the run. And uh, St. Henry rushing the ball this year, 132 yards a game. Trying to get wide this time. There's Holland again. And on the flip side, St. Henry allows 157 yards per game rushing. So neither team uh, really stout at stopping the run. Third down play here, about to three. Bring up third and three from the 31, 6.28 to go. Hart's going to take the snap. Hand off Holland up the middle, and he gets a nice big gain. He picks up a first down. Will Holland looks like he got shot out of a cannon, picks up about 12 yards on the carry. I was about to talk about, that, Danny, the burst of speed that he had right there when he saw that opening, picked up 10 and the first down. But that was his, his quickest jet through the hole that time. Bring up first and 10 from the 47. Hart's back in the gun. He's got Holland off to his right. Two receivers to the right and a single receiver off to the left side. Hart's going to look across the middle. He's going to throw deep down the left side, and it's, oh, dropped in the middle there. His intended target was number 81 for the Redskins, Carter Eilerman. And uh, look, that could have been picked yes, off. It could. Good defensive pressure from Chris Berkey, and he just kind of put it up in the air. And you put the ball up in the air in this type of wind, it's going to hang for a minute. And I thought a couple different Redskins from, from St. Henry had a chance to get to it and just didn't. Yeah, they sure did. And you look at those flags out there. There's three flagpoles, and the wind is blowing really briskly right in the face of the Fort Lormy Redskins. So Hart's in an empty backfield. He's going to throw to the left. He's got his receiver. He's got Maurer out there to the left. And you're going to pick up about three yards on the reception. So Max Maurer, the part-time quarterback receiver, the do-it-all player for the Fort Lauderdale Redskins makes the reception. That'll bring up third down. Right at midfield. Danny, my good friend Mark Miller played at Bowling Green. We did a lot of games together. It takes an 18-mile-per-hour wind to make a flag stand straight. <laughs> <laughs> so that was his judge. Millerisms. <laughs> yeah, so and we're not quite to that point yet, but we're close. <laughs> so Hart's in the gun. He'll take the snap. He's under pressure. He throws off to the right side. And a nice, oh, I thought it was a good catch, but it goes off the grass, and it will fall incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down at midfield. Had to lay out and try to secure that football and just wasn't able to do so. That was to Eilerman. And, and now we're going to have to punt and into the wind. So yeah, Sanford defense say, is held, Danny. This is going to be a tough punt into that wind, but Fort Lormie will go in punt formation. They'll send back Spencer Knopf to punt this one away. Average is 35 yards or about there on the season, but this will be a Pretty difficult into the wind to attain that average. A bad snap there, and under heavy pressure, and he gets it away, and it's yeah. going to roll. Oh, and it's going to be touched by a St. Henry defender, and it'll go out of bounds at about yeah. the 25-yard line. It got into uh, Eli Broering, and fortunately, Eli not kind of knocked it out of bounds with his body. So the story of the game so far is the St. Henry defense playing exceptional football right now as they have stymied Fort Lormie once again, and they'll take over with five minutes to go in the half, Mark. St. Henry has used one timeout, so that might be effect, uh, a, a part of the thing to think about as they take this particular drive. They're going to huddle up over there with Coach Luthman and see what play call to come out with here. Got a big win last week against Riverside. Beat the Pirates in uh, convincing fashion. They feel pretty good about themselves coming into this matchup. 28-5. They gave up a field goal defensively. Obviously, the, the safety that was in there as well. So here comes Charlie Whirling. He's in an empty backfield. He takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself, go off the left side. Whirling tries to get through the defenders, and he's going to pick up about two yards. 6'1", 195-pound sophomore. Fort Larman was able to string that out and never give him a crease where he could make a big run out of it, but still a three-yard pickup. That'll bring up second and seven from the 26-yard line. Whirling has 920 yards this year and seven touchdowns on the ground. You know, St. Henry would like to possess the football for the rest of this half. Whirling finds his man on the left side, and he gets out of bounds. Reception made by number two, Michael Gonzalez. 
We saw him back in punt formation. Michael Gonzalez was the return man. He gets some action here tonight. Makes a nice catch and takes it out of bounds to stop the clock. Nice safe pass, and he caught it in motion. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have to stutter step to catch the football, so he always had his, his uh, legs underneath him and had a good head of steam going. So pushes the ball out to the 33 and a first down. So far tonight, Charlie Whirling doing a nice yes. job of finding his men and getting them in position to catch the ball. And like you said, he led him on that play. So Whirling's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the left and a single receiver to the right. He's going to pass up the right side, and he's got a man out there and a oh. nice reception made by number nine, Hayden Beckman, with a beautiful possession. The four Lorman coaches yeah. are screaming pass interference and saying he pushed off. Carter Gasson was right there with him. And they were kind of doing a little hand fighting up the sideline, but a nice catch. It really threw the ball well. The wind took it up in the air, pushed it out to him, and he was able to make a nice catch all the way down to the 30-yard line. It's a 37-yard pickup. Mark, you're right. Charlie Whirling put the ball on the money right there. The only place he could put it, and he led the receiver to make a nice catch. So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 30. Whirling's going to go to the left side, follow his blockers, and he's going to pick up about two yards. At number 55 out in front of him, Chris Burkey that time, 6'4", 210. And uh, quick paced game so far. We had a <laughs> delay yeah. in the game earlier, Mark, and here we are. We're almost at the 350 mark of the second quarter. And it's three to nothing. And uh, are you surprised with the low scoring? Yeah, I'm a little bit. Uh, I, I'm I'm really surprised. I think at how well St. Henry has defended yes, for a Army. They were in trouble a couple times with possessions in their own end of the field, and they, they've held up very well. So here's Whirling. He's going to keep it himself as he goes off the right side. He finds a crease, and he's going to go into the end zone. Charlie Whirling, the sophomore signal caller, takes it up the middle, and he finds pay dirt, and that makes it 9 nothing on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Did he ever? He made a nice move. They thought they had him right around a two- or three-yard pickup, but he slid to his left, and when he got an open space, he was off. So a nice run by the sophomore quarterback, Charlie Whirling, as he shows you his athleticism, makes it 9 nothing on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. They'll try to tack on the extra point here with 3.24 to go. Snap is back, the hold is good, and the kick is up, and it is good. With 3.24 to go from Fort Barmy High School, the St. Henry Redskins, underdogs in this one, have a 10 to nothing lead. We'll have more action right after these messages. We're back here at Fort Lormy High School where the St. Henry Redskins have taken a 10 to nothing lead with 3.24 to go. Mark, let's take a look at that well, scoring drive. 77 yards, five plays, 143 off the clock. Of course, the big pass play, and then the touchdown run. So they'll take the ball. The kick goes to about the goal line. They'll take it up through the middle. And a nice return there by Fort Lormy as they get up to about the 26-yard line. Did you sense, Danny, a little bit of extra pep in the step now from St. Henry? They, they, they survived two times with Fort Lormy getting the ball on the positive side of the field. And they got to, down to the one-yard line at one point. They're up now 10-0. And I, I just sense a real uh, a liveliness now to St. Henry with some of the things that are going on. If you're Fort Lormy... You get the football now with 3-16 and all three timeouts, and you get the ball first in the second half. A couple big possessions coming up for them. So here comes Hart and the Fort Lomi Redskins. They'll hand the ball off to the first man up the back, up the middle, and that is number, <clears throat> excuse me, Will Holland, as he tries to get across the line of scrimmage for a game of about two, maybe one, maybe none there. They mar they walked it back up towards the line of scrimmage. And the play clocks, or excuse me, the scoreboard says second and 10, so no gain at all. So that's St. Henry Redskins fired up defense right now. Second and seven from the 28. Hart tries to roll off to the right. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to be taken down. And uh, ball's the ball's loose. loose. And they're saying, let's see who they call here. This could be huge for the Red, St. Henry Redskins. Logan DeHan got to him first. And they're going to say Fort Lormy recovered. But that's a, a big sack. A huge loss for the Fort Lormy Redskins. So 
Mark, it's almost like this St. Henry defense has got the entire team fired up just by the way they're playing right now. Yeah, I would agree, Dan. That was a 12-yard loss on the sack and, and the fumble where it was eventually recovered by uh, Fort Laramie, but that they're in a uh, great field position because not only, uh, in fact, I was wondering if St. Henry would call timeout. They only exactly. had two I was thinking left. the same thing, yeah. That'll bring up third and 19 from the 16-yard line. Hart's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Holland up the middle, and not much there, maybe a yard, but that's Here's the safest that. play there. Here's that timeout, Danny. And they're going to force St. Henry. To, Mark, they're going to get the ball back yes. before midfield with, with a minute 50 to go. And, and two timeouts. Look at them on the far sideline. They could just tell the emotion and the enthusiasm right now. And this is going to put some onus on the uh, the Fort Army Redskin defense. But they're going to have to get a stop here. And we've already seen a good wheel. So perhaps we get three and perhaps seven if you're wearing St. Henry colors right now. So 155 to go. Fort Laramie is going to punt the ball away in a, in a dangerous position here towards the goal line market. They've had a problem with the snap the last couple of times. That they have, and they've used now two of their three timeouts. Has St. Henry with 155 to go here in the second. Fort Laramie had a stretch mark where they won four games in a row this year. They ended up uh, coming into week nine. They lose to Lucas, and then week 10, they lose to LCC. But then they get the big playoff win last week over Southeastern and scored a lot of points there, 42 on the board. Those two teams, Lucas and LCC, are both playing very well. Low snap. And he gets the kick off. But Look it at the is wind. Just holding it up, and it goes out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. So St. Henry in great field position to put more points on the board with the wind at their back. Well, it's a good thing they got a little bit of roll because you could just see how the wind knocked the ball down. They got a little bit of roll out of it, made it a little better than what it could have been, but still St. Henry in great field position here with 146 to go. And Fort Lormy continues to have trouble with the snap as that ball rolled towards the punter. And uh, he picks it up. It's a 41-yard line. So they'll go first and 10 from the 41-yard line with a minute 46 to go. St. Henry has one timeout left. They'll use it wisely as they try to put more points on the board before halftime. Charlie Whirling back under center in the gun. Excuse me. He's got Whirling off to his right. He's got two receivers to the left. He's going to take the snap. Come. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to step up in the pocket, and he's going to be taken down yeah. for a big loss. And that is the uh, basic, I don't want to say the first big defensive play by the Redskins of Fort Laramie, but a huge play in well, that they position. really came after him that time. You could see they, they were not going to play, play back and just play cover. They were playing man-to-man -man press, and they came after him. And in that process, got a big loss with the sack. So Whirling takes the loss there. Now it's going to bring up second and 17 from the 48, not what the St. Henry Redskins wanted to see on that first play here in the second quarter. Whirling playing cover two this time, Danny. Whirling's in the gun. He's under heavy pressure again. He's going to take it up the middle, tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage, and he'll get across the original line of scrimmage to about the 39-yard line. Clock continues to run. We'll see if St. Henry takes that last time out. Good nine-yard pickup that time. Not real sure why yeah. they're not taking the timeout or in much a hurry here. It doesn't seem like they're in much of a hurry. Well, if he doesn't get the first down on this play, they may have to punt it away and they want to take that opportunity. Sure. they got to get going here. Play clock down to 13. Whirling takes the snap. Under pressure, steps up in the pocket. He's going to throw the ball deep down the middle. He's got a man out there. And it's caught. Uh, oh, oh, no. I thought it was caught. Mark, and the ball bounces off the turf. And he could have made a heck of a catch. And, boy, I thought they had another. Touchdown. I did, too. I thought the ball was just thrown and it kind of almost thrown away to the very back of the end zone where nobody was going to have a really great chance to make a play on it. But Carter McGuire had a chance to get it. But as you said, Danny, when he hit the turf, it popped loose. But... That's another nicely thrown ball. <laughs> Absolutely. He really put that one up there. That was that punt we talked about. Owen Zimmerman. See if they come after him. 22 seconds to go. Zimmerman back at about the 45-yard line. Punt is up in the air in a nice spiral punt. It's going to hit down at the goal line and goes into the end zone. So St. Henry will bring it out with 15 seconds to go, down 10 to nothing. He almost got that to check up on about the two-yard line. Excuse me, Fort Lorimer will bring it out down 10 nothing. So the Fort Lorimer has all of their timeouts remaining, but uh, looking at 80 yards here, 
I think they just want to get to I was going to say, uh, I don't know that they're going to do anything yeah. sneaky here, Mark. Maybe just get, take a knee and get to, uh, get half to half time. And regroup. Yeah. yeah, you're only down 10-0. Sure. Take any chances right here and do something that might uh, be a pick six or something. And Hart's in the gun. He's going to take the snap and just yep. take the knee and a, a wise move there by the Fort Loramie Redskins. So that'll wrap up the first half from Fort Loramie High School, where the St. Henry Redskins has come to town and they take a 10 to nothing lead. We'll be back with second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School, where the second half is just about to get started. And Mark, St. Henry leads 10 to nothing in the story of the first half. I think you agree with me as the St. Henry defense. Well, I would agree. And I think coaches talk about leaving points on the field, and I think that's how Fort Laramie felt in the opening half. They caught the football one time on the 34-yard line, began a drive on the 34-yard line of St. Henry. That didn't produce points. They got the ball back on the 24-yard line of St. Henry. That didn't produce points. And, and they have left points on the field in the opening half, and they're going to get the football first, Danny. And I am really curious to see how Fort Army will come out and play here in quarter number three after discussing life with their coach at halftime. Yeah, and you remember, Mark, that uh, St. Henry had that wonderful – goal line defense to yes. keep Fort Loramie out of the end zone from the basically the half foot line and uh, what a great job by them so we are just about underway here from Fort Loramie High School Danny Holbrook Mark Shine week two of the state high school playoffs in the Buckeye State so certainly Danny the momentum favored the team wearing white and red when we left at halftime let's see if they can pick it up and continue with that into quarter number three where Fort Loramie comes out with some fire and able to get some things accomplished so that ball goes to about the four-yard line. That's where Fort Lawn will bring it up the middle, and they will be taken down at about the 21-yard line, and a late flag comes in from the back judge there, way out of the play mark. I'm kind of concerned about this one. He signaled hold originally. If that, I mean, he had his back to me. I thought that's what his call was. Let's see what the, the official call is. But it was a long way away from yeah, the play. Yeah, it was a really long. That's what kind of caught my attention when I saw the flag come in from way back behind the play. And uh, we'll see what they call here. And they are calling a hold against Fort Loramie, yeah. so that'll back it up. So there's Fort Loramie putting themselves in another hole right off the bat. They were going to start out on the 22-yard line. But, the, of course, this will be first and 10 because it was assessed on the, the kickoff version of this rather than first and 20. So that'll make it first and 10 from the 20. <clears throat> This is Hart in the gun. He's got three receivers to the left. There goes a man in motion, one to the right. Hart throws off to the left side. He's got Holland out there on the left side. He gets it up the sidelines, and he tiptoes down the sidelines, and, oh, he's going to be taken out of bounds or step out of bounds. Uh, he throws the ball down in frustration, but that could have been a huge play for the Fort Laramie Redskins. Well, Holland had 22 receptions for 203, uh, 231 yards and four touchdowns, and that time they tried to just give him the ball out in space, which he was able to do, and then, just, just quite not able to stay in bounds, but still got it a first down. So they're going to stay with, uh, looks like they're going to stay with Gabe Hart uh, at the quarterback position. They'll go back to the first back up the middle, and he's hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there by the St. Henry defense. I think it was number 53, uh, Tate Layfeld, who got in the backfield and made him do a little jump cut and then did so into a defender's hand. So basically a no gain on that play. That'll bring up second and nine from the 26. Want to thank the good folks here at Fort Loramie for uh, taking care of us at that time, Mark, and bringing the pizza and pizza. the wings and pizza. all kinds yeah. of stuff. So thank you very much to the wonderful staff here at Fort Loramie. There goes Holland off the right side. And again, not much there. And boy, that's, that St. Henry defense is stingy right Dominic now. Dominic Schwartz that time with the tackle. He might have got a yard, maybe. That'll bring up a big third down mark from the 27-yard line. Third and nine, and uh, St. Henry defense just playing lights out right now. Just not able to consistently run the football against them. Here's Hart in the gun. He's got Holland off to his right side. He'll take the snap. He throws to the middle. It's picked off, picked off by number nine from St. Henry. A huge interception in Fort Loramie territory. Hayden Beckman with the interception. He played that perfectly. There were a couple different white shirts that had a chance to get to get to the football. Beckman got there, and 
Well, we talked about how the Fort Army team couldn't score a couple of times when they had great field position, and now they've given the ball to St. Henry in great field position. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where a home style happens here. On the 37-yard line, already with a 10-0 lead. So here come the St. Henry Redskins, already up 10-0. Charlie Whirling in the quarterback position. Had a really nice first half for the Redskins. He's going to take the snap. He's going to look across the middle. He's going to throw deep down the left side. He's got a man out there and just falls short. Going for the home run ball. Coming right. out after, <laughs> yeah. the, after the interception, the change of, quick change of possession. And Mark, the, uh, the he had neat fell down the sideline, just couldn't quite get it to him. <laughs> we talked in the first quarter about St. Henry being in deep in Fort Lormie territory, excuse me, in their own territory. And, you know, since that time, everything's been a short field for the Redskins. They have played uh, well defensively tonight. A couple of big stands in this first half. And now a takeaway right here. So Charlie whirling back in the gun. Got DeHan beside him. I was going to say Logan DeHan yeah. beside him on the left side. He's going to go fake the ball to him, and he's going to bring it off the right side and not much doing there. A gain of about a yard maybe. He tried to get a block from DeHan, but uh, too many good defenders in the road couldn't get to it. Charlie Whirling, the uh, 6'1", 195-pound sophomore, Mark, he's looked really good tonight. Yes. And the thing that he's done that impresses me, you know, he came in with seven interceptions. He's not give the ball away tonight. He is not. And that play was made by number 54, Roger Hoying, 6'2", 265, and he jammed that one up. So here's Whirling in the gun. He's got Logan DeHaan off to his right side. He's got three receivers to the right, one to the left. He's going to throw to the left side. And he's got his man out there at the sticks, and he's going to break away. He gets to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, St. Henry. Jared Neatfield made the first guy miss, and look at that happy redskin sideline for St. Henry. So with 9.44 to go, St. Henry's first possession of the second half. They stick it in the end zone, and they go up 16. What a big play. Taking advantage of the short field. Blind Tinsner Replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Ohio bring your indoors out. Structure is our instant replay sponsor. So here's the point after attempt for the St. Henry Redskins. The snap is back. The hold is good and the kick is up. And it is no good. Off to the left side. That'll make it 16 to nothing. So about the only mistake they've made in the mark with an extra point. 944 to go in the third quarter. The St. Henry Redskins extend their lead to 16 to nothing. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School with 9.44 to go. The St. Henry Redskins on their first possession of the second half score and make it 16 to nothing. They missed the point after try. Mark, there's one thing to make a turnover like St. Henry did. The other thing is to capitalize on it, which they did a really good job that of. That they did. Of course, we saw in the first half where Fort Laramie was unable to do so. Three plays. Uh, they were 37 yards, 56 seconds off the clock. So a little squib kick there that rolls to the 15-yard line. And Holland brings it up to about the 25-yard line. That's where the Fort Lomi Redskins will take over and try to get back in this one. Well, Danny, there's only 9.38 to go here in quarter number three. There's plenty of time left in the football game. But you start to think this becomes a pretty important drive here for Fort Lomi. They're down 16-0. They just turned the football over. They've not been able to get much going offensively against this St. Henry defense. And you kind of think we're getting to the point this might be a real critical possession. Completely agree with you, Mark. And whether they score or not, they really need to flip the field and get the ball on the other end of the field. They played in their end most of the since the second quarter. So here's Hart, and he throws to the right side, and he just overshoots his receiver. The intended target was number 81, Carter Eilerman, the 6'3 junior. Eilerman's had a really good year, but they couldn't get it to him that time. They are going into the wind right now, and against a very stiff breeze this evening. Not a lot happening for that Fort Lormie offense as the St. Henry defense really stiffening up here. This is Hart in the gun. He's got Holland off to the right. He's going to throw to the middle, and he's got his man out there and a nice pitch and catch there to about a gain of about five yards. Reception made by number nine for Fort Lormie, Spencer Knopf, 6'3", junior, makes the catch, and he makes it a manageable third down and four from the 32-yard line. Stop right in the middle of the zone, made the catch. 
So they'll go from the 32, 909 to go here. Hart takes the snap, a little low snap. He's going to roll off to his right, throws to the right side, and he's got a reception made out there for a first down. So Fort Lormie finally getting two plays strung together there and moving the ball towards midfield. Well, it was a really good catch. He had to go down low to make the catch on the football and scoop it up without hit, hitting the turf. That does allow him to pick up the first down to the 41-yard line, so nine-yard pickup, and they move the sticks and keep possession. You see Hart coming over to his coach. He's worried about Michigan people stealing his signs. <laughs> so he comes over to the sidelines and gets a call from his coach. Now oh, you know that didn't happen, I, Mark. I know. <laughs> That's what they're saying. <laughs> Hart back in the A lot of Halloween costumes with Michigan stealing <laughs> signs right. about him. <laughs> Hart takes the week. snap. He's going to roll off to the right. He's under heavy pressure. And here comes that St. Henry defensive line. And a big sack. Big number 50 for St. Henry. Nick Berkey, the 6'4 senior, makes the tackle. There were three of them back there. He never had a chance to turn around. Of course, he was rolling to his left, which makes a throw as a right-handed person even more difficult. And rather than risk just kind of throwing it up, he ate it. But that's a huge loss all the way back to the 29-yard line. Yeah, make it second and 22, Mark, on the loss with 8.25 to go here in the third quarter. Hart's back in the gun. He's going to take the snap under heavy pressure. A little screen pass up the middle, and this will be – up to about the original line of scrimmage as they try to move the ball forward. And that was, looks like Will Holland, number 11. Little middle screen action that time. Tried to get some of that back. And they do get it to the point where it's going to be third and about 12 or so. And I'll tell you what, Mark, I'm going to say this about San Jose. They play really sound fundamental defense right now. They are just in, in the position to make all the plays. You see they're going to rush three this time. Look at all the guys coming. Oh, they're going to blitz off the edge. And here comes Hart. He looks across the middle. He's going to throw deep down the left side. A wobbler up the middle. It's oh. caught. And a nice catch made by number eight. And that is... I think it's 81. Eilerman. 81, excuse me. Eilerman makes the catch. Mark, it looked like he just yeah. went up and took the ball away from the defensive I, I, back. I thought Spencer Knopf had, or excuse me, that's not Spencer Knopf, but number nine, Hayden Beckman had a chance to make a play on the ball, but the ball was just over his outstretched arms. First down and all the way down to the 30-yard line. So here come the Redskins of Fort Lormie. Hart's going to throw to the right side. He's got his man out there looking for a block. Goes across the, about the... 28-yard line, 29. Try to get him out in space, run a little, little screen action on the far side. They're trying to play a little hurry up right now. Yeah, the clock's at 7.15. They, they know they're down three scores and doing a nice job of moving the ball down the just, field. Just get some tempo. Here comes Hart. Looks across the field. He's going to throw in the middle and just off the outstretched arms of Eilerman. He had him, no one around him. It was a tough catch, but it's the kind of catch that Art Eiderman has been able to make this year. He, he's a really good receiver. It would have been a little tough. It was a little high, a little behind him. But it gets to third down. That ball was up in the air a bit, too, off his hands. Might have been an interception, but fell to the turf. That'll make it third and seven from the 27 with 7.03 to go. And certainly, Danny, we're in four-down territory when you're down a 16-0 here. I was thinking the same yeah, thing, Mark. through the third, so they just need to pick up a chunk of it. So Fort Lormie down 16 to nothing here. Hart's in the gun. He'll take the snap. He's going to keep it himself. And he is just a wall of St. Henry defenders. And, boy, that's going to make for a tough fourth down. Well, they thought they could get a quarterback draw out of the situation, but they're just the middle is just plugged up and nowhere to go. Guess who's on the bottom of the pile again? Number 53, Tate Layfield. <laughs> he is having quite a football game. Six foot, 253, and a senior. Tate Layfield, the fire plug, as he just bottles up the middle there. So here we go, fourth and nine from the 24. Hart's in the gun. He takes the snap. He's under pressure. He's going to throw to the right side, and he's got a man out there. It's a flag over there, Dan. Yeah, I was going to say reception was made for a first down, but there's a flag, and you, you think just he, think he pushed off to get uh, open. That's what I'm thinking is going he's to be the call here. Let's see. Really what, wide open on the sideline, and that flag came in. So let's see what they say. They're pointing towards the St. Henry yeah, side. Shouldn't guess on officials' calls. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Let's see what the call the is. Human nature thing. The officials talking it about here. Yeah. 
There's and you were no, Mark. You were correct. Yes. You just go ahead and make those calls well, all you want. <laughs> I, I, I try not to do that, and that got kind of caught up in the game right there. But he was so wide open, and a flag came in. He kind of figured it had to be something like this is a huge penalty. That is a huge penalty, Mark. That look, that ball was across or almost to the twenty yard line, the deepest penetration they've had all night, and now they're going to have to punt the ball away. Well, that fifteen yard loss, yes, it, it's now back to the forty four yard line, and they're going to punt, uh, you know, into the wind right here. So St. Henry gets the ball back and deep Instead for St. Henry. First down or, or very close to it. It's a 15 yard penalty. Number two, Michael Gonzalez and number nine, Hayden Beckman back deep for the Redskins of St. Henry. This is Gonzalez. That's returnable. He's, he's, and oh, he, he drops it, it picks it back up wow. and that could have been disaster for the St. Henry Redskins. Michael Gonzalez tried to catch it on the run and drop the ball but did recover it. Boy, you're a center fielder coming in to make a catch on a fly ball, and it bounces up in front of you. Boy, that's what happened right there. That could have been a, a turnover and go to the way of the Redskins from Fort Laramie, but instead, St. Henry recovers and keeps the football with 6.20 to go in the quarter. Mark, you look at this St. Henry program, and so many big-time uh -huh. names have come out of here. Bobby Hoying, Jim Lachey, and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, just some great players who have donned the white and red for the Redskins. Years ago, Danny, I used to shoot highlights for WSN. I was on the high on and Holman received a kickoff. And all of a sudden, I realized he's getting bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> in my viewfinder. I'm thinking, oh, no, Here this is go. not going to end well. <laughs> he got knocked out of bounds before he got to me. Here's Whirling as he keeps that little quarterback keeper up the middle, and he's taken down for a gain of about three. And who can forget, all-pro center for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Jeff Harding's come out yes. of St. Henry High School, and uh, Scotty Brunswick and uh, Kevin Niekamp, just some great you, players you over there. You talk the years. about a community. And I know everybody has people like this, but they wanted to raise money to have a, a, a an indoor workout facility that's the school could use as well as the community, and they put a beautiful place together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just the, tr the community support in that community and a lot of other places sure, too. I, sure. I shouldn't you know, limit it to that, but wow, did they do a great job with that. And I forgot Todd Beckman. I could just go on and on all night with St. Henry names. <laughs> oh, ball's on the oh, floor, oh, and yep. it's recovered by Fort, Rick, Fort, excuse me, Fort Lormie. A huge break for the Fort Lormie Redskins. So the Fort Lormie Redskins pick that loose ball up, and they're deep in St. Henry territory. Yeah, they had a little miscue on the, on the mesh point between the quarterback and the running back, and it got loose. And I couldn't catch a number for which one of the uh, Fort Army players recovered. But here they are, Danny. They have been in this position before, down in scoring territory, this time with a turnover. And they need to make some ac action on this play. And, Mark, you talked about it earlier with about nine minutes to go. You said it was an important drive. Listen, yeah. with five minutes to go, this is a really important drive for Fort Army. Holland gets the ball up the middle, and he's going to go for about three yards. A nice little run there on first down. Just kept those feet moving. We talked about Holland is 180 pounds, but 5'10", how difficult it can be. we got a Fort Army player down. Yeah, we got a Fort Army player down. They'll tend to him on the field. We'll step aside for a break. We come back, we'll have further action. You're watching High School Sports on WSN. We're back here at Fort Laramie High School. The injured player for the Fort Laramie Redskins is number 64, Jason Siegel, the 6'1", 240-pound senior. He walks off the field on his own accord, which is good to see, Mark. Yeah. So here come the Fort Laramie Redskins trying to get back in this one. Second and six from the 24. Hart's in the gun. He's going to go back, look around the field, throws deep down the middle, and he's got a man out there, and he overshoots his intended target, and that was into double coverage. And we've got – yep, he's going to be able to get up. It looked like he was struggling a little bit there. That time, Fort Laramie's offensive line did a really nice job of giving him time to run that pattern all the way to the goal line and throw the football up. So good, good pass protection that time, but throwing in double coverage and not able to snag it. Carter Eilerman was the intended – receiver there. I think it's a rule of Fort Laramie. You have to have a, an Islander playing wide receiver. <laughs> Seems like they've had one forever down here. They've had it forever. Here comes Hart in the gun. Third and six from the 24. They'll go Holland up the middle and he is going to be close to a first down. And let's I guess, see what they mark. I guess there. the term they use, Danny, is jump cut. He is so good at that. He's able he to, just to move himself sideways to get into the hole. He's going to be a little bit short, though. Makes it fourth and two. And, Mark, from my taste, and look, I'm not a football coach, but I, I think I'd keep this on the ground and let that young man just create. He is dynamic. Fourth and a couple. So here come the Redskins, Fort Lormie. Hart's in the gun. He's got Holland off to his right side. 
They look across the field to see what their coach wants them to do with 4.33 to go. Clock continues to run. Hart's going to go Holland up the middle, and he's easily going to pick up the first down, and a nice job there by Will Holland. It's exactly what I'd like to see him do, Mark, and a nice two, three-yard pickup. Well, when you need yardage, you give the ball to your best back on his best play, and that was off the right guard. Hey, it's good to see. Uh, I think we just got uh, Siegel back in the game, I think. I know a lineman came in from the sideline. I think it was him. Clock continues to run at 4:14 here. St. Henry leads 16 to nothing on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. This is oh, he's going to keep it. Hart's going to throw oh, off God. to the right side. He's got a man dashing towards the end zone, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Fort Loramie! A nice little razzle dazzle as they yeah. fake the handoff to Holland. They go split wide to the wide receiver, and he takes it in from about 15 out. Got Eilerman with the football that time, and the idea was, you know, it's, they're 16. They want to go for two here. 16 to 6, and that's exactly what I think they're going to do and make it a one possession game, Mark. So let's see what they throw out their best two point play here as the home crowd is on their feet. Finally, something to cheer about as the momentum seems to have turned a little bit here. That was a little screen action. They got a good block out there on the, on the corner and able to get the ball into the end zone. So Hart's got Holland off to his right side. Two receivers to the left, a single receiver to the left. And and we've got a timeout. Fort Lorman is going to take a timeout. With 4.02 to go, the St. Henry Redskins lead 16-6. to We'll have more action right after these messages. Welcome back to Fort Lorman High School with 4.02 to go. Fort Lormy takes his time out to talk about this two-point conversion mark, and they get this, it's a one-score game. Yeah, and of course, the big key to this is they scored off a turnover. They took that fumble, went right into the end zone, 33 yards, five plays, 134 off the clock. This can make it an eight-point game. So both teams tonight have got a turnover and a score off of that turnover. So here comes Hart in the gun. He's got a man in motion, He's getting, and another flag comes down, so... We have seen quite a few flags tonight, and they are going to say a movement on the line, a false start by the Fort Lormy Redskins. Now, I wonder if that changes it because now it becomes an eight-yard conversion attempt. It doesn't look like they're bringing in yeah. the place kicker, so I think they're going to stay with the two-point conversion, but it may change the play call. Four oh two to go. Danny Horg, Mark Shine from Fort Laramie High School, week two of the state football playoffs. We've been checking our scores all night uh, we tonight. <laughs> we want to see where the area teams in Lyman Land are playing and how they're doing. Check out that WOSN app. We've got all the scores for you. Here's Hart. He's going to look across the middle, throw to the left side, and he's got it. He's got the reception out there in the corner of the end zone. A nice bullet from Hart, and let's see who the reception is made by. And looks like Max Mauer. I think it was Mauer, yeah. yeah. Max Mauer. That might be the best ball he has thrown all evening. He had a lot of zip on it. He threw it right to the location where only his guy could get it. And we're six point, eight, eight point game. So with 4.02 to go, St. Henry leads 16 to eight. And what they, that was, you said it earlier, Mark, that was the most needed drive they had all evening. And they finally turned it into points. Well, there's a couple of things involved with that. Obviously, you want to capitalize off of turnovers and great field position, which they didn't do in the first half. But also, they have now scored that touchdown going into the win. And in four minutes and two seconds, we're going to flip, flip the it, field. Yeah. They'll have the win at their back as we go into quarter number four. That's a great point, Mark. Back deep for St. Henry is number two, Christian Gonzalez. Or excuse me, Michael Gonzalez. And it looks like number nine on the left side, Hayden Beckman. And in the middle of the field, we're having all kinds of trouble getting numbers tonight. Deep kick. And it will be fielded by Gonzalez on the side. Goes back to the middle, back to the side, and he'll be taken and uh, taken down uh, about the 26-yard line. That's where St. Henry will take over. Well, the question is now, where does the momentum go? It, it, is it up in the air at this particular point? Does it go with Fort Larry because they just scored? Does St. Henry have a drive in them now that will take the momentum back to their side of the field? 
And an interesting scenario here as we go into 357 in the third. Yeah, that's a great point, Mark. We're going to watch and see if St. Henry doesn't want to flex their muscles with that offensive line and maybe put the ball on the ground and take a little time off that clock. And anything well, you can score right here would be really good for your uh, chances. You know, when you're 4 and 7 on the year, sometimes you get a little bit of doubt starts to creep in. Sure. And so this is a pretty important possession for them right here. So here we go. Charlie Worling, the sophomore quarterback, brings his troops out with 357 to go. They've got an eight point lead. Worling's going to keep it himself, go off the left side towards the sideline, and he gets a nice gain of about three to four yards. Charlie Worling. Designed run to the right side of the formation. Picked up about six, it looks like. Clock stops 25. with 353 to go in the third quarter. They're back to the line of scrimmage I was going to say, yeah, they, yep. that's exactly what I was thinking, Mark. They're going to the line of scrimmage in a hurry, trying to get that rhythm. You talked well, about it earlier. And they're going unbalanced line this time. They're going unbalanced line left this time. And obviously three receivers over there plus a slot back. He's got Worley onto his left hip. He's going to keep it himself, follow the lead blocker through the hole. Maybe a gain of about one. That's going to bring up third and four if he got that one yard. Stout defense there by the Fort Loramie defensive front there. They're going to call it third and three from the 33. So a manageable third down for St. Henry as they try to keep that ball in their side of the field. They need to get three. Here's Whirling in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his right and two to the left. Whirling's take the snap. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll out of the pocket, throws back, and the ball is deflected, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And you are correct, Mark. The momentum has yeah. absolutely turned in the favor of the Fort Lormie Redskins. They, they brought five that time, and they just forced him out of the pocket. And, of course, if you can make a right-handed quarterback roll left, it becomes a more difficult throw. And with that, we're going to get a, a, a St. Henry punt. Yeah, with 3.09 to go. Owen Zimmerman comes out to punt the ball back to Fort Lormie. And they've got their two deep men at about the 33-yard line. So they're going to get excellent field position here Mowers. at the end of the third quarter. Mowers closest to our side of the field. Holland on the far side. Nice high punt. Be fielded at the 30-yard line. Cuts back to the middle, and he's going to be all the way up to the 40-yard line. So for Lorme is in business, Mark. Down one score with three minutes exactly on the scoreboard. The Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard tells us it's 16-8 to St. Henry. And their defense stepped up that time, made it a three and out. Got a good big stop with quarterback pressure on third down and hot offense back on the field. So here comes Hart, Holland, and company. As they try to knot this one up at 16, they'll go first and 10 from the 40. Little razzle-dazzle, same, same play. They yeah. ran for the touchdown, and there you see the connection made taken up towards midfield. And that was Maurer yeah. on the reception, so they like what they saw there, Mark. The exact same play they scored on a touchdown. Yeah, you get a wide receiver coming back to the middle of the field, then you get a block on, him, on the quarterback trying to play him. That'll bring up second and three from the 41-yard line. Hart's going to go Holland off to the middle of the field, and he is going to be taken down close to a first down. That's going to be a real manageable third and about one. Pulled a, two players to the right side of the field, including, including the wing back. We just couldn't kick St. Henry out for more than just a couple-yard gain. Great job there by number 55, Chris Berkey. We called his name quite a bit tonight, the defensive end, holding off on his block and staying home there and making a tackle. Third and one from the 44. Hart is going to go Holland off the left side, and Holland easily gets the first down. And Will Holland picking up some big-time first downs. Well, he got the first down, and Danny, you said easily, and that's true when it comes from a yardage standpoint, but that, he had to work for that. We took a couple of hits and bounced off a couple people well, to, the, it's to e the 48. <laughs> it's easy to say easily when you're up here in the booth and yeah. uh, not going through it's some of those big fellows from St. Henry. <laughs> trips right uh, looked like early movement on the right side no flag was thrown Did you catch but that? Uh, nope. no connection there uh, my goodness we'll have to take a look at that on our uh... pass was a bit low they said it skipped off the grass into his arms the structure replay will show us there uh, I thought there was movement on the right side of the field but no, no uh, penalty was thrown that'll bring up second and ten from the 48 
Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Ohio bring your indoors out. Here we go. Second 10 from the 48. Hart's going to take a low snap, and there's a flag coming in. That usually means a false start on the Fort Loramie uh, offensive line. And that's exactly what that call is. So that'll back them up more. They heard you, Dan. They didn't want to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> they heard they heard you. <laughs> Back to the 47. That was the person listening to my broadcast. <laughs> that's the guy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Either way, it's second and 15. Second and 15 from the 41-yard line with a 139 to go. They got trips to the left and a single receiver wide right. They'll go Holland off the left side. He cuts back towards the middle, and he is thrown down for a gain of about two yards across the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to run, 125 calling in the third quarter. Dominic Schwartz, part of that tackle. Number 55, Chris Berkey turned it back in that time to get some help from his teammates. So a six-yard pickup. Ty Kemper enters the ball game for Fort Army, the 6'3", 205-pound junior. Tight end comes in. Boy, if you're St. Henry, you really want to get a stop here because it would force a punt into the wind. Because you're going to change sides here. Before we get the quarter flip. Here's Hart in the gun. He's going to take a snap. Here They're they come. bringing some pressure. He's going to throw across the middle, and he's got a man out there and a nice throw from Hart across the middle. And the reception made by, let's see who that is. Is that Eilerman? Got to get a number here. No, that you're right, Mark. Red jerseys and black yeah. numbers, tough to see. Number 15 for Fort Lauren. Ah, there you go. Cole Barhorst, the 6'2 junior. We've talked him about a little tonight. Here comes Hart. You'll go Holland up the middle. And Holland was hit in the hole. You got to be kidding me. Number 32, Logan Dehan. We've called his name quite a few times tonight. And he met him in the middle and just laid the wood. Did he ever, ever. And no, no gain on that play. Haven't the last couple, three passes been really well thrown? Uh, you know, by the by the quarterback yeah. heart. He seems like he's really getting a, a feel for the ball and the game right now. And they do not have to run a play right, right here if they don't want, Danny. He's throwing into the wind too, Mark, he which is. makes it even tougher. But but just the, the velocity on the ball and it seems more confident when he throws it. And this is going to take us to the fourth. So that'll do it after three quarters of play from Fort Laramie High School. The Fort Laramie Redskins down 16 to eight to the St. Henry Redskins. We'll have fourth quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School to start of the fourth quarter. And the Fort Laramie Redskins marching down the field at the 33-yard line. This is Hart in the gun. He's going to take the snap, looking across the field. Got plenty of time. He rolls to his right. Now he's under heavy pressure, and he goes down. It looked like he slipped there, Mark, as he, he tried did. to plant his foot. And bad luck for the Fort Laramie Redskins as he takes the sack. Yeah, number 78, Jacob Layfeld had him hemmed in, and he wanted to just throw it away, but particular point, but his foot slipped out from underneath him. He couldn't do so. That's a huge loss. Mark, that's going to bring up third and 18. Now, that's that's a tough third down here. Third and 18 from the 41. I suppose if you're Fort Lormer, you want to pick up half of this here. So here's Hart in the gun. He's got trip receivers to the right under pressure. They'll go screen pass to Holland up the middle. Oh, what a play. And a nice play. There's that man again, Mark. Number 55, Chris Berkey. We've talked about him all night. What great speed. He turned it on. It was really a good play call. He was, he was past the, the offensive or defensive lineman, but he was able to turn, recognize the play, and make a quick tackle, and they're going to punt it away. Yeah, they're going to punt it away, and hopefully their defense can hold St. Henry deep down in their own territory. That would bring up fourth and 13 from the 36. And uh, either way, the, I, I don't think I can argue with either decision yeah. if they'd have went for it, being down this far, or punt the ball away. Now I understand what he's doing. Ty Kemper is deep. So Fort Loramie going to try not to kick it in the end zone, try to go for the corner, in which he does a nice corner kick. Good kick. Yeah, that's going to go out about the 10-yard line. Let's see where they mark this one at. <laughs> Getting a little help from that fan <laughs> on the sideline. <laughs> uh, there was a fan down on the sidelines, and he's telling the official exactly uh, where it went out. <laughs> Now the official's giving, yeah, him, giving him the business. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> and people wonder why we like high school sports, Danny. Right. I mean, you know. It, and they're both smiling down there, so it must have been something. <laughs> but this means that Sanders is going to get the ball on the 12, and they need to make some first downs here. 
So here we go, the start of the fourth quarter. St. Henry with the lead, 16 to eight. Whirling's back at the quarterback position. He's got a single back off to his left side. He's got three receivers to the right. He'll take the snap. He's gonna keep it himself, follow the lead block, and he is going to be taken down. Great penetration by that Fort Laramie defense, led by number 26 on the drive. Ray Hoying, the 6'2 sophomore, comes out of nowhere and takes him down. Wanted to run to the short side of the field, but just not nothing there. They've been going unbalanced line, and they want to go to, you know, to the short side of the field with just those two guys, Tara. And there's not no way to get around the end there. Second 13 from the four yard, or, yeah, from the four yard line, nine yard line, excuse me, yeah. from the nine yard line. Here comes Whirling. He's got an empty backfield. He's got three receivers to the right, and he's got a man going in motion. He's going to keep it himself. Goes off the left side, trying to pick up some yardage, and he gets away from the first wave of tacklers, and he'll be taken out of bounds, close to a first down. So a nice job by Whirling as he keeps the ball himself. Carter Gaston had to bring him down. They're just going to make sure that nobody fumbles the football on a, on a missed handoff. He's going to keep the ball in the hands of the quarterback out of the shotgun and, and just try to make a play with it. But now he left himself with a third and about six. Yeah, third and six. Man is ruled down here. Logan Dehan checks out of the game. He was the lead blocker on that last play. So here comes Whirling as he's got four receivers off to his right side and a single receiver to the left. He's going to roll to the right side, looks down, throws the ball down. He's got his man out there, and it's going to be close, Mark. He dove for the first down marker. The reception was made. We're going to have to see where they mark it at. There's an official right there, so that we know where the spot's going to be. And Fort Laramie says he's short. Let's see what the official no, says. No, the official nope, says he did first not. down. Yes. The uh, Fort Laramie uh, defender was clapping his hands like they did not get the first down, and then the official came out and made the movement that it is a first down. So a huge first down play. That keeps the clock at 9.45. Boy, they needed 10, and they got 10 right to the 22-yard line. Let's see if they put the ball back into the hands oh, the of the quarterback and let him go. Yeah, the chains are just now yeah, moving. Just moving it, yeah. <laughs> Nobody got them the message that they got the first down. And uh... What's well, the hometown chain crew? They didn't, <laughs> didn't want to move. <laughs> Uh, the officials, the Fort Laramie coaches were uh, kind of had their hands up like, why is the play clock not started? And I think the officials told them that uh, the chain gang did not move them. Well, the game clock hadn't started either, so yeah. that, we were okay with that. So he looked at the sideline to get the play call. So Whirling's going to let that play clock go down. A smart move by that human. Take some time off this clock with a 16-8 to 8 lead. Well, the clock never started. No, it has not. He stayed in bounds, didn't he? I thought he did. Well, apparently he did not. <laughs> it never started. This is Whirling. He's going to keep it himself. Looking for a blocker on the right side and gets through a little bit of a crease, maybe a gain of one as he goes near the chain gang over there on the St. Henry sideline. I was on a chain gang. When I was in Bellevue, I was on the chain gang for football season, and I loved it. Did you really? I was a young coach, and every week, every five times a year, I got to see how a coach handled his staff and his players in football. And as a young coach, it was a great learning experience. I really enjoyed it. Well, members of the chain gang and the people that volunteer their time for every Friday night around, they're invaluable pieces to a successful program. Here's Whirling as he keeps it himself, goes up the middle, and not much of anything. Not at all. He is taken down, hit hard by looks like number 72 from Fort Loramie. Some serious collisions. We got some people down now. We got two St. Henry uh, Redskins down. So there's a... Uh, Officials time out on the field. We've got a couple fellas down. We'll let them take a look at them. We'll step aside. Watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School. Here is what we know. The injured player was Charlie Whirling, the 6'1 sophomore quarterback. Uh, Mark, he was uh, down on the field quite a bit. Uh, he was attended by eight or nine medical personnel. Uh, they did take him off on a cart. He is headed towards the hospital, so prayers and best wishes yes, for that young man. And lots of prayers in this press box already, Danny. More will continue. So here's St. Henry as they try to keep that drive alive. And the pass was out to the left side, intended for number one. I think they called Jared a catch. Midfield. I think they did. 
And into quarterback right now for St. Henry is Jack Hulsman, the 6'1", 170-pound sophomore. Young man is 51 of 106 for 653 yards this year. Uh, the silver lining about the injury here, Mark, is they got a backup quarterback with a lot of experience. He's played a lot this year, and... and what a nice pass. We couldn't see the catch because the Fort Army players were standing up in front of us, but a nice sliding catch to make it. First Here's down. Schulzman hands the ball off. First back through the middle. And going to take about a one-yard loss, maybe a gain of uh, back to the line of scrimmage, of maybe half a yard. That was number 22 for St. Henry. We called him quite a bit tonight, Ryan Worley. Clock continues to run at 8-10. Really tough to get both teams you know, focused back on again. We also know that number 50, Nick Burke, he went out. He's been treated on the sideline. We, we, he looked like he was just kind of dazed a bit. Yeah, he, wa he was wobbling yes. a little bit, but uh, he uh, he is not back in the game yet. So. He's seated with, with the personnel on the side on line, too, so a couple of injuries there. Schulzman's going to keep it himself. He rolls to the right, and he throws off the right side. And he's got his man out there, and are they going to call it a catch? No catch. So that ball falls incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Still clinging to an eight-point lead is St. Henry. The wind now favors Fort Laramie. Just a lot of a uh, lot of stoppage of yes. play tonight. And look, I'm not nothing bad about the stoppage of play when you're tending to a a hurt player on the field. But it just seems like no, nothing can get established in the rhythm here. So here's Yulesman. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He's in the gun. He'll take the snap. He's going to throw to the right side. He's got a man out there. And he caught the ball. You've got to be kidding oh, me, Mark. Oh, my goodness. You've got to be kidding me. Number nine, Hayden Beckman, fell down and catches the ball while he's sitting down. <laughs> he did. <laughs> oh, right. You know what? They call those back shoulder throws. That's kind of like backside throw. He's laying on the ground out there and caught the football. What a play. <laughs> you Oh, my goodness. Beckman, I don't know if he knew the ball was coming, and he looked up as he was sitting on his backside, and he catches the ball. And it, it floated a bit into the wind, just dropped right into him. Great concentration, great catch. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 41. Here's St. Henry again. Here comes Worley as he tries to get off the left side, and he's drugged down by a host of uh, Fort Lormy Redskins. That clock continues to run down to... Right at the seven-minute mark here. Set, that offensive me... line, you know, for St. Henry. Nick Berkey was in there, but 55, Chris Berkey, 67, Alex Poe, 68, Jake Sweeterman, 71, Anderson Kramer, 78, Jacob Layfeld. And they've done a pretty good job this evening against this Fort Laramie front. And you just wonder, Mark, uh, Fort Laramie with two timeouts left. If St. Henry continues this drive, if they don't take one of these timeouts to give themselves enough time. Well, this is the 11th play of the drive. Here's Shieldsman, hands off to Worley off the right side. And he's hit immediately, a gain of about a yard and a half, but that clock continues to run down towards the six-minute mark. It began four minutes and 20 seconds ago. So they've eaten some time off the clock, and they moved it down now to the 39-yard line. That'll bring up third and eight from the 34-yard line. 6-10 to go here in the fourth quarter. The winner will get the winner of Ansonia and Mechanicsburg at a neutral site. And now next week, Ansonia was up big at halftime. And, of course, by the time you watch our replay of this, you'll know who that team will be playing, who the winner of this game will play. And either of these teams plays Ansonia or, who, you know, if it is Ansonia, that'll be a closer game for both these teams. There's screen. a little screen pass. Yep. They'll go to the right side. He's got the first down. <laughs> Big number 32, Logan Dehan, and we've called his name quite a few times tonight. Had that screen pass set up very, very well to get the first down. Really a nice, safe throw, and also one that got the first down for him. We're down to 544. That'll keep the chains moving. St. Henry continues to lead 16 to 8, and now we've got a timeout on the field. And we've got an injury. Okay, we've got a Fort Laramie Redskin is down on the turf. We've got an injury on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Fort Laramie High School, the injured player was number three, Max Maurer, as he's being taken off the field, walks off on his own accord. So wishing that young man best of luck here. 
Looked like something in his left shoulder yeah, as he, he was came holding, off. Yeah, you're right, Mark. He was holding his shoulder there a little bit, and he's being tended to by the trainers on the sideline. Boy, there's a tough job these oh. high school trainers have, and they do an excellent job every Friday night. So here come the Redskins from St. Henry. They'll go up the middle, oh. and a nice big run by Dehan as he goes up through the middle, and he's a load, Mark. Well, Alex, we talk, or, uh, Danny, we talk about pancake blocks. Alex posted just pancake block. He, <laughs> number, number 67 came out on the, when he pulled 6'1", 255. It's a nine-yard pickup. That'll bring it second and one for the 21. How big would it be for St. Henry to put oh, numbers on the board right here? It'd be huge right now for St. Henry. They, they have controlled the clock, Danny. This is going to be the 13th, 14th play of the drive. If they put numbers up, they'll be two scores ahead and, and around three minutes or so in the game. They'll hand off to, De excuse me, Dehan. He'll go up the middle and he'll be taken down maybe a yard, yard and a half. Logan Dehan right now is the workhorse for the St. Henry Redskins. This is time for the Fort Laramie defense to step up. It is third and short. Third and one from the 21. This brings up an interesting point, Mark. If they don't get the first down here on this play, do you go for it on fourth and one with the clock continuing to run? I, I would think so, especially where we're at. A field goal will be into the wind. So here comes Hulesman as he leads his troops out on third and one from the 21. He's got Dehan in the backfield with him. He'll hand the ball to Dehan. He goes up the middle, and he's being pushed by his offensive lineman. And where the official's coming in, Mark, it looks like he's got the first down. That is, that is unofficial, but it does look like he may have the first down. We'll have to take a look here. The official on our side says first down. But they're not going to mark it they're that way. Gonna, I was going to say no. the official gave the first down sign over he here did. on the left side of the field. Oh, my goodness. We're, we're fourth and inches from the 20. The biggest play of the game right now, Mark. Let's see what they do here. Here comes Hulesman in the gun. He's got Dehan off to his right. And the play clock runs and the game clock runs. Play clock's down to 10. I wonder if St. Henry runs this all the way down and out, take, yeah. take a timeout and get the exact play call and get everybody on the same page. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So we get a timeout on the field with 3.26 to go in the game. St. Henry leads 16-8. to eight. We'll have the exciting conclusion right after these messages. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School with 326 to go. The St. Henry Redskins continue to lead 16 to 8. And Mark, this is a long drive. <laughs> that is. This will be the 16th play of this drive coming up in just a moment that began back on their own 12-yard line. And they have taken 7 minutes and 14 seconds off the clock. Each team has two timeouts remaining. Here we go. Fourth and one from the 21. The home crowd is on their feet. St. Henry trying to convert on fourth and one. Hulesman takes the snap. He goes Dehan and he gets the first down and a big roar of approval, excuse me, a big roar of approval from the St. Henry sidelines. Well, he got hit at the feet, but his leg strength was so good he was able to get over that and pick up a first down. Boy, what a big first down play that was for St. Henry. Good time out there, Mark, because you know they talked about which side they were going to go to, and they got penetration on the right side, and he did a really nice job. That they did. First and 10 from the 24 clock continues to run. We're down to the 3.05 mark. Hulesman's in the gun. Dehan's behind him. He's got three receivers to the left. Take as much time off the clock as you can. Play clock down to 10. Game clock down under three minutes now. Hulesman's going to hand off to Dehan. He'll go right through the middle, and they'll keep that clock running. Not much going there. Maybe a yard, a yard and a half, but the clock continues to run. Fort Laramie has yeah, two timeouts, and they just used one. They're going to take a timeout here with 2.43 to go. So 16-8, to eight, St. Henry leads. And, and Mark, we, we, knew that, uh, we knew it was going to be an offensive explosion. We knew that both teams were limited on what they can do offensively. But, boy, defense has been the name of the game tonight. That it has. Look at it, a 16-8 to eight game. Fort Laramie scored because of a, a turnover. They're able to convert into points. And, and you look at it, and we talked about this earlier, Mark, that yeah. St. Henry stops Fort Laramie on the goal line yes. in the first quarter, or this could be a different game. So that, that may be what we call the play of the game. Uh, they, they stopped them twice, two different drives. The second one, the one you're discussing, that got all the way to the one. 
So, yes, it has been a, a St. Henry team stepping up to make big, big defensive plays when they needed to. And now Fort Laramie looking at second and eight. They can stop the clock just one more time. Again, quarterback Charlie Whirling, the starting quarterback for St. Henry, went down earlier this evening, uh, was taken off of the field by an ambulance. If we get any word on that young man, we will surely pass it on to you, but prayers to him and his family. Uh, he was tended to by medical professionals, and they, they did a great job with him. Yeah, Mark. he did. Really very patient to take their time yep. and handle him correctly. So here comes St. Henry, second and eight from the 17. Hulesman's in the gun. He's got Dehan off to the right. They're going to go Dehan up the middle as he dances around. And the ball's, ball's fumbled. The ball's yes. on the ground. And Fort Lormie's got it. A huge break for the Fort Lormie Redskins. Unbelievable, oh, Mark. Just the, what they needed. Yeah, the 18th play of the drive. They were going to. You know, run the clock out, basically, get it down to under a, a minute or so before this. They had to turn it over, but instead they turn it over on a fumble. So here come the Fort Lormie Redskins with 2.37 to go, one timeout, and they're going to have to go the length of the football field to tie this one up. And don't forget, if they do score, they're going to need a two-point conversion. Wow, from the 16-yard line. And it's hurry-up offense time for the team wearing red and black. First and 10 from the 16. Hart's in the gun. He's going to look across. He's going to hurry up. He's going up the middle under heavy pressure, and he's thrown down to the ground. And he takes a big-time hit as his helmet slammed down to the ground, but he jumps back up. They'll go quick huddle. They'll go no huddle at all here yeah. as they go right to the line. Hart gets his troops in formation. They'll snap the ball. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to be behind. taken down. Yep. You, you called it, Mark. You yep. saw it before I did. <laughs> yeah, <she> did. <laughs> My goodness. You know, coming off the edge, number 32, and that is uh, looking to see. Oh, yeah. Why, why would I know? He's been running the football. Dehan's <laughs> been running the football like crazy, and now we got an injured redskin down. Yeah, it looks like number 11, Will Holland, and uh, he is holding his leg up. And maybe it's a cramp, maybe. Uh, yeah, he's going to bounce right back up. And it is Will Holland. That's one they cannot afford to lose. The cramp, hopefully it's just a yeah, cramp I, I and not think, that left ankle. Yeah, I think it may be because the, the trainer was kind of pushing on his toes, which would be a good sign that it is a cramp. That's a three-yard loss, though, back to the 19-yard line. And it makes it third and about seven, maybe third, eight. Yeah, third and yeah, third and seven from the 14. Clock continues to run. We are now under two minutes to play here in the regulation They'll go shotgun as he looks across the field, throws to the right, and it's almost picked off, and it's thrown over top of his intended target, number 81, Carter Eilerman. But there you saw the misintended pass there down the sidelines. It'll bring up fourth down, what we could see, the play of the game. You know, there was DeHaan again coming off the right side of the defensive formation. He got pressure on, got the quarterback after he released the ball. Look at the St. Henry fans <laughs> and are. players. They know the importance of this play. 152 to go, fourth and seven from the 14. Hart is in the gun. He's got two receivers to the left, one on the slot, one on the right. He's going to take the snap. He's going to throw across the middle, and it just falls errant, and it will go back to St. Henry on downs on fourth and seven. Danny, I don't think you can say enough about how well St. Henry has defended this evening. Yeah, they gave up a touchdown on the short field after the, the, the uh, turnover a little while ago, but other than that, they have stood up very, very well this evening, and they're 148 away from moving into the third round of this playoff. Yeah, the, and, and the important thing here, Mark, is Lormy only has one, one timeout time out. left. Yes. So you you got to figure that they're going to keep the ball on the ground to force the timeout to be used. I would. <laughs> Absolutely. You're not going to put this ball in the air. I would imagine you're going to try to have your quarterback just keep it as well so you don't have to worry about a, a handoff on an exchange yes. fumble. Yeah. That's a great point. And you're going to eventually get to the point where maybe you can just uh, go to the victory formation. Let's see what they do with this here. And they're going to stay in the shotgun formation. Yeah. Hulesman yeah. takes the ball. They'll go Dehan, who go off to the right side. And that will keep the clock running, and that's where they'll take that last time out. So 16 to 8 with 141 to go. Oh, no, they did not. I thought they took the time out, but they – Well, they did, but they didn't stop the clock. The, the, the clock's not stopping. It went from 141 to 137, and yeah. I wonder if the officials are going to make a change here. We'll have to wait and see, but the uh, – Either way, that is their final timeout. At 137, at least, that's where the clock is going to be right now. Picked up a couple of yards on that play, too. So, Mark, we've had, 
<laughs> we had some fantastic weather nights. A uh, little bit of wind tonight, but the temperature's been great. No yeah. precipitation. Last week was fantastic weather, and uh, you know it's going to get us sometime. Well, let me tell you, I got me this week, Danny. I'm mowing my grass Tuesday, and what happens? It snows. It snows, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> While I'm mowing the grass. Come on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it has been a good fall for the most part. We've had a couple of cool nights and one with some rain in it, but uh, we've had a lot of good nights this fall as well. I saw a lot of football this year, Mark. Yeah. Uh, who's your top team in Northwest Ohio? Well, I mean, obviously Marion well, Local, Marian is, uh, Local is the is standard. Right there. Yeah. yeah, they've just had a, a tremendous year right now. But there's some teams that have really been uh, on the upswing as well. Wapak Kaneda is playing outstanding right now. Um, I, I think we can go name a lot of other schools. Sure. Coldwater was playing really well right now. There's just a bunch of them are having really good runs in the tournament. Macomb is scoring a lot of points. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, so, yeah, there's some really good teams in our area right now. Columbus Grove, Bluffton out of the Northwest Conference are playing well. Um, yet some good action, action coming up here as we head into the week, third week of the playoff next week. So here comes Hulsman in the gun at second and seven. They'll go Dehan off the right side, and he is going to be taken down, but uh, no hurry out of the St. Henry Redskins as that clock continues to run, and Fort Lormie has no timeouts. That'll bring up a third down. You're almost to the point where you say, young man, don't struggle. You know, just, just, sure. just go down and not take a chance of having it get popped loose from you. Picked up a yard now to the 15. They need to get to the 9 for a first down, but more importantly is the clock right here and maintaining possession. So third and six from the 15, they can run the play clock down under, a, excuse me, it'll go under a minute. Well, just just about under a minute. Let's see here. Eight seconds. We're at 104. Oh, and everybody and there, moved. Everybody yep. moved. And not what St. Henry wanted to do there. That stops the clock. And it is a false start for the St. Henry Redskins. So a big mistake there. With 103. Now, does that stop the clock, Danny, until... Until the ball is snapped, is yeah, that how it goes? Exactly. It'll, right. it'll come back when the ball is snapped at 103. But that makes it third and 11, Mark. It and does. you uh, you want to keep the ball on the ground, but third and 11, a tough situation here to ask Dehan or Hulsman well, to pick that up on their feet. What you want to do now is just maintain possession of the football. And even if you have to turn it over on downs, there'll be very little time left and no timeouts for Fort Army. So just hang on to the football if you're wearing a white jersey. So Hulsman's in the gun. He's got Dehan behind him. They're going to hand the ball off to Dehan as he goes up the middle, and they try to rip the ball out, but the clock continues to run. We're under a minute. It'll be about 15 seconds when we snap this one. And the St. Henry Redskins are going to let this one go down. They've got two timeouts left. I'm sure they're going to let it go down where they take a timeout. That's about how well their defense has played, Danny. They gave up a field goal last week. They gave up a touchdown this week and a two-point conversion. And, and so their playoff defense has been outstanding. This would be a 31-yard field goal, Mark. Do you think uh, they no. risked? You're exactly no, right. This is no, exactly no, no. what I would do is not <laughs> kick too, the field too goal. Too many negative things could happen, and there are points you don't actually need. Yeah. And they'll take the timeout, and that'll put the clock at 16 seconds to go. So they'll take a timeout. They'll discuss this with 16 seconds to go. Uh, a, a tough game tonight for both sides. And what I mean by that is there just not a lot of rhythm. We talked about that and not a lot of flow to the game. And uh, both defenses played outstanding, uh, but uh, not what I thought we were going to see coming into this. The, the, the injury bug has hit both teams. Yes. We've, we've had some, some delays that have taken place tonight with injuries, with a big discussion about whether there was a turnover or not in the first yes, quarter. Yes, yes. There's been, a, a, at times, a lack of flow to the football game because of that. And I think you're right. It has been a difficult game. And perhaps that's one of the reasons that, that, that St. Henry is in such a position they are. They've had a lot of difficult football games this year, and they're trying to get themselves to 5-7 and seven and move to Week 3 in the playoffs. And what a what a thrill that would be for oh. those kids after a tough season, a three yes. win season, and uh, they, you know making it to the third round of the playoffs. Oh, my goodness, especially well, in in this region. Well, and, and Danny, I guess we've I've used this analogy a couple of times, including once here tonight. It's kind of like those basketball teams that go through a regular season and they struggle a little bit, not got as many wins as they want, but you go to zero zero when you start the playoffs, yeah. and yeah. and that's what they've been able to do and put that behind them. And they're 16.1 away from getting a win. And let's be honest, Mark, it doesn't hurt that they play in the Midwestern Athletic where, Conference where every week is <laughs> yes, just an sir. absolute grind. So these kids know the rigors of uh, tough competition. And they're going to go for it here, Mark, on 4th and 12 sure. and uh, see what they can do here with 16 seconds to go. Hulsman's going to keep it himself. 
and he's going to throw the ball to the end zone, to the corner of the end zone. The catch is no catch is not made, Got but a there's flag a flag, though. yes, and that's going to do it, Mark. Wow. If that is pass interference, that is going to do it. What a an unbelievable play call, to it be was. honest with he, you. But it paid off for him. Well, he had Neatfeld in the end zone, and Neatfeld was the one that I think got pushed out of bounds, so he couldn't make the catch, and that is the call. That is the call. They're going to call wow. pass interference on Fort Loramie, and that is going to do it. And, and there's another. That's going to yeah, be an unsportsman. That right? is, yeah, one of the kids from Fort Loramie yeah. said something to the official. But, you know, Danny, when you talk about that play call, why not? Yeah. You know, throw it, throw it where nobody can get it but your guy. And if, if it's an incomplete pass, it's going to be – clock's going to stop on turnover downs anyway. So that's a really good play call. A little bit of coaching down there on the yeah. field as the young man who got the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty was met by the coach. And uh, yeah, frustrations get the it, best it of you, Mark. Yeah. It, that's exactly what it is. And I'm sure that young man feels as bad as anybody does. But that will put the clock at 10.2 seconds to go. And St. Henry will take a knee, and they will move on to the third round of the state playoffs here in Ohio. Well, and, of course, I think we've got guys back at WSN. In about uh, 20 minutes, they're going to meet Danny and start looking at who we want to try <laughs> to cover next week and uh, looking at sites and looking at uh, potential matchups and sales and all those types of things. So stay tuned to our station uh, next week. We've got volleyball, soccer, and, <laughs> and football we've coming up. All. And that'll do it from Fort Laramie High School. The St. Henry Redskins win a thriller 16 to 8, Mark. 16 to 8. They will go to a 5 and 7 on the season, but more importantly for them, they're 2 and 0 in the playoffs. And <laughs> you know, after a, a, a Fort Laramie team which has had some high points in this season and some low points, they're going to go 6 and 6 on the season. And of course, we really our biggest concerns right now was the young man who was injured and we heard, certainly hope and pray that he comes out well, but congratulations to St. Henry to move on. Big thanks to the folks here at Fort Loramie for their hospitality and all the great work they do. For Mark Shine, and our entire WSN crew, I'm Danny Holbrook. And our final score tonight from Fort Loramie High School, the St. Henry Redskins move on to round three with a 16-8 victory.